Hi, welcome to Recovery Recreation. My name is Susie Lordy, and I'm the host of the show. I'm also the founder of a nonprofit called 24 Hour Power Inc., and we do recovery graffiti all over Massachusetts. And at some of our events lately, we've heard people come up to us saying, man, there is just nothing fun to do in this town. And that's what spurred us on to create this cool program. And what we're going to do is we're going to hunt down fun things to do, interesting things to do, healthy things to do for people in recovery, their families, their friends, basically anybody that wants to live a healthy lifestyle. So uh, look for us every month. There's a little something for everyone here. And this is our very first episode, and we are so psyched because our first two guests are personal favorites of mine, the distinguished district attorney of Plymouth County, Mr. Timothy Cruz. Thanks for having me, Susie. It's Tim, great to be here. Tim, thanks for coming. It's great to be and here. And Plymouth County Sheriff Joe McDonald. Thank you, Susie. It's a pleasure to be here. Joe, this is great. I just, I, I'm just so happy. Well, so. We're, <laughs> we're both thrilled you chose us as your first uh, really? guest. Yeah. Oh, yeah apparently the be... other ones couldn't make it. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we're kidding. But, we're... Um, and now, um, but what we'd like to talk about first, I think that's very important, is so many people, when they hear the word district attorney or sheriff, they think about the law, you know, like police and jails and courtrooms. Tim, what's something else that, you know, people should really relate to when they're thinking about your office? I mean, I think you're absolutely right. When they hear district attorney, they think of the television shows, Law and Order, CSI, when in actuality, we're so much more than that. And, and mm -hmm. by working in the community and trying to prevent crime, trying to get in front of issues and help people so that they never enter the criminal justice system. You know, every year we have drug forfeited funds that when we do take drug dealers off the streets and get their monies and put it back into our community in a positive fashion, we're able to give that money back. And we do that through our drug education camp, which we do every summer for more than 600 kids for free, go to Whitman Hanson High School and have a great time and learn something about staying away from drugs and alcohol and the issues that they're all dealing with. So the preventative aspects of what we do are so incredibly important. And maybe people don't hear about as much of those things as they should, because there's so many things that we do do. Absolutely not. And, and I was fortunate to, um, actually 24 hour power, was very fortunate to also be a recipient of the drug forfeiture money when we were able to do an awesome recovery graffiti event at Independence Academy. Would have never happened without your help. And it's gr and it's great because by funding things such as Independence Academy, funding you know, your your group right there, and all the other various groups uh, across our county, I think it makes a real difference. And that we're going to continue to do that, making sure we can do our jobs as prosecutors, but at the same time try to help people and working together with you know our, our partners, Sheriff Joe McDonald, it makes a real good impact in our community. Absolutely, that's awesome. Joe, what about you? What's something that people wouldn't necessarily associate the sheriff's office with? You know, it's funny. Most people, um, <clears throat> you know, Tim, the DA's office, they've got shows like Law and Order and those, uh, those law shows that uh, are very respectable. But I think when you think of the sheriff, what do you think of Smokey and the Bandit or, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the Dukes of Hazard? Absolutely. But uh, let me assure you, it's <laughs> nothing like that. It's nothing like that. Uh, what we do, the Sheriff's Office does uh, county-level correction, but here in Plymouth County we're actually a lot more than that uh, because we provide uh, very vital law enforcement and public safety services to all of our police departments uh, and uh, EMS and fire. We do mutual aid uh, communications through our communication center. We have a crime lab, the BCI. Um, we have uh, canines that come off. It's, so we really have a, a lot of dynamic things down there, but something that people might not stop to think about, and it's uh, it's you know we're glad to be able to do it but it's it's an unfortunate statistic is we're one of the largest providers of detox and uh, drug rehabilitative services in the county wow. and uh, yeah and that's what I say and I, I don't think that that should be the case mm. so the sheriffs believe it or not really are on the cutting edge Absolutely. of, of uh, drug treatment and uh, you know I'm just uh, well I'm glad we're to be thrilled part to of have it. you and, and on that note um, I, I want everyone to know that Tim and Joe um, also co-chair uh, the Plymouth County Task Force and what that means to people like you and me is if someone overdoses in Plymouth County within 12 to 24 hours you can expect a police officer a licensed clinician and a recovery coach to show up and offer services that's unheard of and that's huge 
Thank and, you so much, you guys, for that. Well, I mean, I mean, it really is, and that all, as you said, emanates from the task force. And the task force was something that the sheriff and I put together back in 2015 because of the, the large number of fatal opioid overdoses and the non-fatal opioid overdoses that were occurring in our county. So out of our public safety portion of our task force, uh, we put together with all the police chiefs, you know, the Plymouth County Outreach. There were so many areas that you worked together on. Well, first off, let me let me start by saying this. You know, you correctly point out that Tim and I work on so many initiatives and projects together, which, you know, I, I think the two of us working together accomplish much more than either of us could do individually or separately, you know, combining what we could do. So we come together in what's almost like uh, what a physicist would call constructive interference. Well, Stasky and Hutch. Well, you know, thank you for that. But uh, <laughs> coming back to the triad, which is just another program that we get to work together on, and I, I enjoy uh, that tremendously, it's, it's law enforcement, public safety teaming up with our local seniors to, uh, to do Me. special events, exactly, to educate our seniors about public safety issues that... Uh, that are really relevant and uh, and a free lunch and a free lunch yeah well actually uh, the lunch is paid for usually uh, through monies uh, the district attorney's office sees us from the drug dealers so we're uh, awesome we're, yeah we're having lunch uh, and uh, we're we having lunch on the drug dealers yeah I yeah. like it and that's what we say to, to lots of people when we go out there and we get the resources that the drug dealers are, are real because they're, they're hurting people they're killing people absolutely and we need to go after them and make sure that they're held accountable and lots of them aren't users themselves they just sell the drugs mm. and therefore you know they, how do you hurt them the most you put them in jail and you take their money and you take their resources that's it. Take and then their and then, and then take those monies right, and yep. put them back into the community. And that's what we've been doing for a really long time. And that's, and that's undercover. Believe me, nobody knows what you're doing with that. I'm thrilled that I happen to be a recipient of it, but I guarantee a yeah. lot of people don't know it. So I'm thrilled you're on the show just to talk about that. Now, we're going to get into the cool stuff, which to me is what's going on this month. So we have this thing called Battle of the Badges on Saturday, September 14th from 12 to 4 at Westgate Lakes. Right, and it's, and it's going to be 42 teams that are lining up and trying to bowl against each other. But really, at the end of the day, it's raising money to try to make sure we can get help the resources out down the sheriff's department. And, you know, and, sh and the sheriff is really, uh, he, he's not loud enough about the great things they do down the sheriff's department, the reentry programs, the quarry job fairs, the things that are going on down there that are unprecedented throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Things like the, the Battle of the Badges is going to help raise money and also, just as importantly, awareness to the problems that are going on and that there are people who are working in public safety, that are working in law enforcement, that understand that we need to stop the cycle of these drug issues gotcha. and drug problems. Gotcha. Forty-something teams? Forty Two, 42 All right, teams. And, and who's on the teams? All the others, police departments, fire departments, uh, first responders, sheriff's departments. Uh, wow. a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of guys are out there training, as I understand it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the, uh, uh, most great. of those are, those are the sheriff guys. Oh, I, I can think, imagine. You know, no competition yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I know Jim Fraser and Derek Webb, who work uh, down the jail uh, for Joe, they do a tremendous job, and they really organize this, and I think it's going to be something very positive. And once again, getting the word out and, and people understanding that there are people that need help in law enforcement, right. public safety, EMS, firefighters, sheriffs, DAs. Wow, we're here, bowling together. We're here, this is going to be we're awesome. Here, we're here to help. We won't be bowling along. I no, don't think, no, we'll no. We'll be knocked Everybody's out got first. Separate teams. We'll, we'll be knocked out. I'll be knocked out relatively early. I've heard we but, get some um, cool names for these teams. They, they as, do. As, they as, well, they I, do. I, I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> my my bowling days uh, are. Oh, my glory days of bowling are long since past. Uh, but I'm still. And that's all. Yeah, that's it. I'm, this, as you correctly point out, Susie, this is going to be fun. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be competitive. Uh, we know we're not going to win, and that's fine. We're good with that. But okay, think, so what does it cost to bowl? It's fifty dollars a person, two hundred dollars a team for a man of four. Okay. But there's also lots of things there for kids. There's going to be a touch a truck there for kids. Ooh. There's going to be other things that we can provide to the family. So make sure you sign up, come down, bring your kids, have a good time. They have for lunch a good cause. too for this, right? I yes. mean, if you, yes. if you register for this, yes, they do. Uh, there, there is the, your your group, your artists from your recovery team are going to be there, and also doing a mural, as I understand. Absolutely. It, right? And we are so psyched. Similar, do, similar to this, bigger than the one gonna, behind us? I'm or? telling you, it's going to be it's going to be monstrous. Oh, wow. But we'll make sure it's on a canvas so you can roll it up and oh, you good. can bring it places because <laughs> we're going to we're going to stick with the same theme though. It's going to be about how everybody works together to make a difference. You know, whether it's public safety or it's the community at large. I mean, how are we all coming together to make a difference? 
that's a challenging task for me to explain in vague terms to my artists. I can't wait to see what they come up with, but I think it's going to be something that is, that's really powerful, and I can't wait to see you know, where it's going to wind up. We, down here in Plymouth County, are actually, I mean, we're setting the stage. The stuff that's going on here isn't happening in other parts of the country, let alone parts of Massachusetts. Yeah. So absolutely. I think it's important that we give ourselves a, a hand on that. And you know what? The statistics show that what we're doing is actually working. Right. Yeah. And, oh, and, yeah. And, that, and that's the most important thing of all is that, you know, last year in 2017 through 2018, overall in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, fatal opioid overdoses were down 1%. But in Plymouth County, uh, they were down 26 or 27 percent. And now, and now, between from January to now, we're down another 25, 26 percent. So, you know, the numbers are going in the right direction. You can't it, tell me there's no correlation between that and the Plymouth County I, Task Force oh, with I, everybody showing up within a day and the champion plan, everything else you've got going on. I, I there mean, are, really, there are no coincidences. Susan. Right. No. No coincidences. Right. But the, the good news is, is that we're going the right direction. But you know, we still have work to do, and and that's why you have to continue going forward and making sure that you can always have programs like this, groups like yours, people understanding, like, like you just said, it's everybody working together. That's what makes Absolutely. a difference. If, so let's work together. Let's make a difference. And I am hopeful that not only what we do with law enforcement issues, but also trying to help people with these issues. I think it's working. We're going to continue to do that and make sure we can try to do our best to keep people safe. And that's why we're going to all come out and support Saturday, September 14th from 12 to 4 at Westgate Lanes. The Battle of the Badges Fall Brawl. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait to see everybody there. Well, who knew the sheriff and the DA could be so much fun? I did. <laughs> and that's why I brought them on our first show. And thanks, seriously, Joe and Tim, for all you do. Well, and you. we're going to be back in a minute. So what I want to make sure that you remember is don't ever think you can't have fun sober. You just haven't hung out with us yet. <laughs> And on that note, peace out. We'll see you in a few. Welcome back to Recovery Recreation. Now we're going to talk about a nonprofit organization that's called the Phoenix. They represent a sober, active, lifestyle. What's better than that? Started in 2006 back in Colorado and since then more than 28,000 people have walked through their doors nationally. Wow. So here to talk with us a little bit about that today is an instructor at the Phoenix in Boston actually, Kelly Hi. Caves. Kelly, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Great. So now the Phoenix this is a gym for sober people. Is that is that what we're talking about here? Absolutely. Uh, people in recovery, people that are supporters of recovery, like their friends and family. Anybody with 48 hours of continuous sobriety is welcome. Wow, that's great. And so you're in recovery too, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Would, would you mind telling us just a little bit about your background and your story? Sure. I grew up in Colorado. That's actually where I found the Phoenix in the first place. Um, I had some trouble with drugs and alcohol when I was much younger. Um, I got into treatment at 14. Um, wow. And that treatment program was uh, really helpful for me in the beginning. Um, but once I graduated it, I didn't really have a lot of other sober friends. Yeah, um, my troubles kind of picked up where they left off. I uh, just felt a lot of shame and loneliness. And I mm. kind of, you know, felt like I had to make up for lost time because uh, my entire childhood where I was, you know, sober, all my friends were going out partying. So um, I was going a little bit hard, kind of acting like, oh, this is normal. This is what people my age are sure. doing. Um, then I kind of looked around and realized that I was the only one <laughs> doing those sorts of things. Um, so once I realized I needed help. That's I, a rude awakening. Yes. Been there, done that. Absolutely. Where you think that, you know, Oh yeah, everybody parties like me, and it's mm -hmm. like, no, n not even close to the case. Yeah, not quite. Um, so yeah, I, I knew I needed help, and thankfully I had that background in recovery to kind of know mm -hmm. when to ask for help and how to ask for help. Um, so I started uh, looking to other resources. Somebody told me about the Phoenix, um, and I didn't have a background in fitness, so I was like... Really? Uh, really, yeah. Okay, that gives us hope then. Yeah, I had never, you know, I even would skip gym class in high school whenever I got the chance. Ah! 
I uh, wasn't really into Love working it. out. Um, so I was kind of resistant to the Phoenix at first. I was just really nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody kept encouraging me saying, you know, it's really more about the community. People there will love you. You know, you just got to show up and, and you'll make some friends. And nobody cares about how fit you are. And this was in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So okay. I started going. I actually first went to a yoga class at Phoenix and then I found their Olympic lifting and I fell in love right away. Um, wow. Olympic lifting. That sounds wild. It's What's really that all about? Um, so it focuses on the, the snatch and the clean and jerk, two Olympic lifts that they do in the actual Olympics. I so that kind of introduced me to CrossFit, which uses some elements of weightlifting, but there's also some low-level gymnastics and other things like that. That's a big buzzword right now, yeah. CrossFit. It you is. hear that everywhere. Yeah. Um, don't really know what it's all about because <laughs> I haven't been to a gym recently, but doesn't mean that won't change now that I've met the Phoenix. So. When I first heard about it, I was like, that is not for me. People running around sweaty, that does not sound like something I want to do. Um, but I <laughs> gave it a try, and, you know, when I was early in recovery, I just kind of needed uh, something to do. You know, I, I needed a positive outlet. I didn't have anything to do uh, that was positive and uplifting. So Well, see, that's what happens, too. People forget, okay, so you put down the drugs and alcohol, and then what? Yeah. I mean, you have a lot of free time on your hands. Exactly. Okay, and a lot of excess energy that you never had before. So, you know, you have to expend it some way. Yeah. Why not do it in a healthy way, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, so we also do yoga. We do a lot of outdoor events like climbing and hiking. Uh, we have family-friendly well, events. That's cool. But, yeah, we do game nights. We recently did a tie-dye t-shirt Really? Night. Absolutely. Yeah, so... So this isn't just a gym. Not at all. This it's really is... A community Absolutely. of people hanging out doing healthy things together. Yeah, exactly. I always say the workout is really secondary to what we're trying to do, which is Aww. build community. Oh, that's awesome. Um, th that so, and this is free. Is that is that even possible that this is free? That's right. Yeah. So, wow. uh, all free for anybody with at least forty eight hours of continuous sobriety. That's all we now, ask. Now, where can we find the Phoenix? I know you're all over. Uh, the U.S. So where in Massachusetts can we find you? In Massachusetts, we're in Boston, in Newmarket Square. Um, okay. We're also in Lowell. Uh, we partner with the Middlesex County Sheriff's Office there. Really? Yeah. And uh, we are down in the Cape at CrossFit Bourne. Neat. Yeah, and we also partner with a gym in Webster, Massachusetts. Wow. That's great. So there's a lot of different opportunities for people to go. Absolutely. Th this, this brings me to this whole Phoenix vibe. I'll bet... If you went from one Phoenix to another Phoenix, it would just be like, still kind of like cheers, like everybody still knows your name, like you show up and, and you're part of this Phoenix family or something. Yeah, exactly. So um, we have a team member agreement that we have everybody sign when they come in. It just kind of outlines, you know, how we want people to treat each other. It's all based around just being, you know, respectful of one another, knowing that we all come from different backgrounds. We all have different stories. We never really know uh, what somebody might have been through. Sure. So we want to treat everyone. That's huge. Yeah. No, that is. Um, some people are going to be more open and other people are going to want a little bit of space with that. And, and you're respectful in either, either case. From what I understand, too, someone was telling me that if someone just comes to the Phoenix, it, it's not like you just signed up for a basic gym, right? So what are some of the other services that are available to them besides, okay, listen, you know, we're going to go climb this wall or something. I get it with the technical questions. They can, they can ask your help on that. Um, but don't you offer other things as well? Yeah, so um, we, we try to, you know, host as many things as we can. We'll always try to put people in touch with additional recovery support services oh, if it's not huge. something we can help with. Yeah. Um, so if it's outside of something we do in our walls, we'll definitely try to put someone in touch with someone that can help. A lot of our instructors are in recovery themselves, so a lot of us have experience with other communities. Right, and I bet if they're not in recovery, they're at least allies to recovery. Absolutely. So everybody yes. is pretty well versed in this, which is... Which is so important, I mean, especially now. I mean, this is, this is what I mean where a lot of times I'll say to people, you know, there are so many things that, that can bring different pathways to help us feel better about ourselves in recovery. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. It sounds like you people already have a ton of different ways. Yeah. I mean, if you're talking game night and social events, you know, then you can go climb a wall or go hiking with us. That's, uh, that's quite a combo. Yeah, and it's it's just like you're saying about it's about feeling better about ourselves. So a lot of it is redefining what recovery looks like and and yeah. kind of you know what we think of as recovery. And yet now, what about um, 
I, I think I'd be a little afraid to go as far as to say that this is the next gen for substance abuse treatment, but this is definitely something that would complement it, correct? Yeah, so we always encourage people to, um, you know, find as many pathways to recovery as they can right. and figure as many tools in your toolbox as you have is always a good thing. I love that you guys have free yoga too. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what about members with kids? Can kids come to these? events or mm -hmm. show up at the Phoenix? How does that work? We have some family friendly events. Some of our more social stuff is usually open to families. Um, anyone over the age of five can come to those events if they're you know previously mentioned. Um, other than the family friendly events we just ask that everybody's 18 and up. So. Oh that's cool. Okay so regular members are 18 and up. Yeah. If you're having a barbecue or a cookout or something like that you can definitely bring your kids so long as they're over five. Yeah, we'll usually mention ahead of time if it's a family-friendly event. Nice. So, That's yeah. cool. So it's it's not just about the person that gets to enjoy working out. It's it's really end-to-end -end family activity on yeah. a lot of these occasions. That's that's. Um, I'm very impressed with you. And the, the other thing that, that I think is amazing is the Phoenix is like all over the news right now, okay? And what I'm wondering is how... What did you guys do to get to work with the Red Sox? You gotta be kidding me. Like, what is that all about? Yeah, we um, are an official partner of the Red Sox this year, so, um, you know, that's been super exciting. We got to do a workout at Fenway the other day. No way. Um, you know what? That's where I saw Lee. Okay. I saw a picture of Lee, Lee Soares, who is an instructor at the Phoenix Boston. He's also an awesome graffiti artist. Hi, Lee. And actually, this is his artwork that he did for 24 Hour Power, which is which is quite phenomenal. Soba and the city of Boston seems like an apropos thing for our show, right? Seeing as we're talking about cool sober things to do in Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, so you do that, okay? So at Red Sox, for the Red Sox, you can work out there. Um, sometimes, yeah, we've gotten to do a couple events at Fenway Park. We had about 20 people come to yep. do the workout. Yeah, we had five different stations. Where so were, we they? Got were they? To be... Were they on the field? Or? No, so we were um, in the concourse, so kind of where like all the food is. We sure. also did a workout on the bleachers and on the Green Monster. So. Oh my lord! Yeah, we were no all. No way! Over. I hope that I hope that they were in shape. Oh yeah. <laughs> Doing no, the bleachers. <laughs> I just picture myself trying to run up those bleachers. Good luck there. But I bet it was a running thing, wasn't it? It was a little bit of everything. <laughs> we had some kettlebells, some dumbbells. We really? made it a whole workout. Yeah. That's true. There's there's so much more that goes on gym related these days. And <laughs> uh, a new person walking into the Phoenix may be a little intimidated, but I don't think so much, right? I mean, I, I think it's a lot less stressful walking into a Phoenix than say, I can't really name another gym, but you know what I mean, like one of the franchise big box gyms out sure. there. Yeah, I mean, that was my experience. That's what kept me uh, from coming to Phoenix earlier was that I was nervous to come to a gym. Right. Um, so, it, you know, I had a friend finally bring me with them and that was helpful. But as soon as I walked in, the, the staff and, and volunteers are all so wonderful. So, um, you know, it's, it's really a goal of ours to and make it as- And if you have as... questions, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I, I'm just no. picturing myself at the gym now. So let's say I really want to work on, on a fitness plan for sure. myself. How does that work? Do I hire a personal trainer through the Phoenix, or is this something that you know instructors will come over and help you with, or how does that work? So we have open gym time where you can kind of come in and do your own thing, and there are instructors there to help. Um, oh, but great. we always encourage people to come check out a class. Um, so we do sure. a lot of instructing in all of our classes. We make sure people are really comfortable with the movements that they're doing before they um, jump into any heavy weights or anything like that. So um, a great way to learn and get kind of first involved in fitness is to come check out one of our classes to learn okay. some of the more basic stuff. Um, I would love to learn how to overcome my fear of heights by doing that wall. Oh my God. I've seen that wall and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> and I see people and they're, and they're all smiling going up the wall and I'm thinking you gotta be kidding me. But I think that would be a phenomenal workout. Absolutely. And it would, it would just feel so empowering. Yeah. I'd feel like I was the rock, like going up, you know, in like an action movie or something. Absolutely. That's so now people that have never done that, there are plenty of safety harnesses and whatnot on you, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we always say we like to teach people to climb, not just take people climbing. So we'll show okay. you how to put the harness on, how to tie into the rope and kind of all the safety checkpoints that go along with it so that people can eventually learn, you know, the whole process of climbing and, you know, wow. eventually hopefully go out climbing with their friends. And then, so it's not just the wall there. I mean, you guys go climbing outside, like in the wilderness. 
Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> this is pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I don't want to forget, because I think this is the last month, unfortunately, where this has taken place, but I want to go on and talk about this Phoenix Fit Outdoor Exercise Series that you guys have going on in Boston. Because I saw the pictures from this, and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. Oh, What's I that all about, Kelly? So I've been coaching that. It's every Thursday on the Rose Kennedy Greenway uh, from 6 to 7 o'clock. We do a workout um, on Oliver Street in Atlantic Ave. There's a big patch of grass. So it's typically... Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. We usually do like a body weight workout. It's often like a boot camp style circuit. So lots of burpees, you know, squats, push-ups, sit-ups, that kind of thing. Wow. And everybody walking by and just seeing you guys... Yeah. Ripping it out. It's super exciting. So we're doing that every Thursday till the end of September. Yeah, that's neat. And actually, I have that on a calendar that I'm going to make sure that people know about because, again, that's free, right? Yes. Now, what do you need to bring with you for something like that? Something like that, you might want to bring a water bottle. Some people bring yoga mats, but you really don't need anything. It's oh, just be... bring yourself, pretty much. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's that's easy. I didn't know if you had to bring barbells and all oh, this, no. and I'm picturing taking the tea out there or something, but <laughs> no, it sounds like a a pretty easy one-stop way to work out outside in a, in a cool atmosphere. Yeah. And that's part of what it's all about, too. Let's face it. I mean, just looking at a, looking at a blank wall in a gym doesn't do it for me. Watching mm -hmm. a TV at a gym on a treadmill doesn't do it for me. I like how you incorporate all of this to do with just a healthy lifestyle, yeah. right? I've seen plenty of pictures that you guys have. People are in road races. You're doing all kinds of stuff. You're swimming. I mean... You're all hanging together, yeah. doing fun things outside, which, and those are free, I just, I, I just can't, I can't imagine. I really can't, but um, we're really lucky to have you. And what I want to focus on is to let people know that the Phoenix, again, started in Colorado. It's all over Massachusetts. I didn't even know about the Webster location, so that's new. Yeah. Um, and it's free. So if you've got, what, two days sober, check them out. And Kelly, I can't thank you enough for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You're a lovely guest, and uh, you're making me rethink my, my no workout strategy. I oh, think, yeah. I think I'm going to come join you guys, even if it's just to hang out with you. Yeah. I mean, you're, ju you're just a fun bunch, I can tell. Thanks, yeah, come by and see us. <laughs> and that's all for this segment, but I want you to remember, don't think... You can't have fun sober. You just haven't hung out with us yet. Till next time, peace out.